So why wouldn't he just fire you? Well, as I explained on Tucker Carlson's show, like Ben doesn't have the power to fire me. Candace Owens and conservative website The Daily Wire have officially broken up. Friday morning, The Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring posted on X, quote, Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on it. I have to say, I, I, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. First he was fired by CNN. Now he's been let go by Elon Musk, even before his show appears on X. Don Lemon says his first guest was supposed to be Musk himself. But after the interview, Musk canceled his show. It's been a rough two weeks for Candace Owens and Don Lemon. See, they both made the mistake of believing their bosses when they said they believe in free speech. And they do, as long as you're not talking about them. Hello everyone, my name is Rogan and this is This Behaving Gal. On my platform, I do social commentary and reaction videos. I encourage my audience to have private conversations in public. Oh, before I get into the video, I wanna thank my subscribers who have taken that leap to become channel members. If you like what I'm doing here on my platform and you wanna support my channel, please sign up for membership. All the details are down below. So I'm going to get into the interview with Don Lemon and Elon Musk on his new platform, but you're gonna have to stay until the end of the video to hear what I have to say. Trust me, it is worth the wait. But for now, I'm going to kick things off with Candace Owens. As many of you know by now, conservative commentator Candace Owens has parted ways with The Daily Wire. The Daily Wire CEO and co-founder Jeremy Boring made the announcement on X a few days ago, and the post was quite simple, saying, quote, Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Now, Candace Owens joined back in 2020. I believe this was during the pandemic. She also confirmed the news in a simple post, also on X, saying, quote, the rumors are true. I am finally free. She also said there will be many announcements in the coming weeks. Funny enough, Candace left as she came because if you saw her original post back in 2020, it was very similar. She said, quote, the rumors are true. I'm moving to Nashville and joining the Daily Wire. Now, anyone who's been following the news and following uh, Candace Owens has probably seen her in interviews looking quite unhappy. She seemed to be very unhappy over at the Daily Wire. And I think this all kicked off ever since um, last year when she got into a very, very public spat with her now former colleague, who, um, Ben Shapiro, who is also a conservative commentator. So for many people, her departure was not unexpected. It's unclear if she just decided to sever ties or if she was fired. Many people are saying that she was let go. Owens, why am I calling her Owens? Let me call her Candace. You guys know her as Candace. Candace had said very publicly on the Tucker Carlson show and also recently on The Breakfast Club that Ben Shapiro had absolutely no authority to fire her. And she'd said that several times in the media. And I always used to say, girl, you gonna mess around and find out. You're gonna mess around and find out and find out she did. Even though Shapiro functions as the editor at large, I believe, over at the Daily Wire, there's no denying that he has a tremendous pull. After all, he is the co-founder of the Daily Wire. Well, like I said, Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens have been sparring for months. I think it all kicked off last October when the massacre happened in Israel. And from then, the situation or their relationship has been going downhill. I don't know that they ever had a super strong relationship, but for as far as working, as far as the working relationship, it definitely was in the toilet. Candace had expressed some serious concerns with the war in Gaza and had likened it to genocide. It also didn't help that she was friends with rapper Kanye West, who is definitely in hot water with the Jewish community due to his anti-Semitic statements over the years. And definitely they are anti-Semitic statements. There's no doubt about that, just based on what he has said. But Candace, for the most part, harped on the fact that she didn't feel like America should be funding this war. She felt very sorry for the women and children, innocent civilians who were being killed as a result of this war. And those are the things that she spoke about constantly, at least in interviews. But she's not alone. A lot of people have said similar statements, uh, whether they're politicians or celebrities or everyday laymen like you and me. Uh, there are individuals who are really disturbed about what is happening in the Gaza Strip. And then the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this has been on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not post sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying and I find them disreputable. There you have Ben Shapiro calling his Daily Wire colleague Candace Owens disgraceful over her comments and coverage of the ongoing war in the Gaza Strip, which has in fact dis disproportionately killed thousands of civilians, including children. 
Now showing concern for innocent civilians dying is apparently a big no-no for Ben Shapiro. In a video that I did last year right after the massacre, and if you wanna see that video, you can click up here. I'm not gonna go rehash it too much. Uh, but I talked about the fact that there are some in the Jewish community who are very hell-bent on labeling any criticism of that community or Israel as anti-Semitic. In that video, I said that no one is off limits when it comes to criticizing Israel or Jewish people, just like no one's off limits in criticizing any group of people. Everybody has to deal with criticism. So I, I don't believe that that group is above reproach. And I think people reserve the right to say, I don't like what is happening in the Gaza Strip. I don't like what's happening to women and children. And I was somebody who absolutely supported their um, decision to fire back at, at Hamas. So, and that has not changed. But people certainly do reserve the right to say that they are concerned about children. And I think that was one of the main topics that uh, Candace Owens um, talked about. Now, the reason why Candace and Ben got into it so heatedly is because Ben is Jewish. He's married to an Israeli woman. He has some serious ties to Israel. So naturally, any criticism of Israel would be deeply personal for him, as it would be for any one of us if anyone um, was attacking or, or criticizing our country. But here's my thing. Ben Shapiro is Mr. Facts Don't Care About Feelings. He and the Daily Wire have made a living and gotten extremely popular off of criticizing the black community, the transgender community, the gay community, woke people, politicians, Democrats, feminists, you name it. And they often turn up their noses at cancel culture and silencing the opposition. They had no issue, it seems, when Candace was taking the black community to task or taking the transgender community to task or taking feminists to task. They had nothing to say. So why was it okay for her to talk about those communities, but all of a sudden it's an issue when she is speaking about the Jewish community or Israel's stance, or saying more specifically that she has a problem with children being bombed in the Gaza Strip. Why is that an issue? I think the Daily Wire has lost a lot of credibility now that Candace Owens has been removed. I think that the damage is going to be irreparable for the Daily Wire. I don't think they're gonna close up shop. I think they have a very strong and robust platform, but I think they have lost major moral ground when it comes to lecturing others about cancel culture and wokeism or whatever else that they run on with from time to time. They are going to be met with major side eyes, particularly Ben, particularly Ben, if he or anyone on that platform starts to accuse any other community or people of wrongdoing. It's gonna be a severe backlash for that. And they will be forever reminded of this moment. I don't really watch Ben Shapiro's shows, but I have seen him in interviews and he does have a brilliant mind. There's no doubt that he is well-read. Um, he's well-versed on topics. Uh, he's he Most times he's very prepared, but you know, he's not perfect, nobody is. And he does on occasion come across as a really spoiled brat. He can be very petulant. So I could certainly see how he probably would have made it very uncomfortable for Candace over these past few months. I will never forget his public meltdown with Andrew Neal on the BBC during an interview. I mean, just watching him, I'm like, I don't know what this guy, how he acts behind closed doors, but um, just take a look, just roll it. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? I, I just really? asked you a question. And I asked you a question, you failed to answer a single one of mine. Well, Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, just try and I don't answer care. the I don't, I don't frankly give a damn what you you're, think of me since I've never you, heard of you. You, and I've never heard of you until I briefed myself for this, but that's not the issue. You have a then new book Then why the hell are you interviewing it's me, an in, It's an interesting book. But my point is, your book claims that society... Well, it'd be society, nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is... Well, actually, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again, if you would let me just finish the question. Your book now, frankly, claims I don't that think society this, you know honestly, is turning honestly, its back sir? on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What, considering what, what are the values it's turning its back on? I... I you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All sir. right. Thank you well, so much. thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye. During that interview, if memory serves me correctly, I think he even referred to um, <laughs> Andrew Neal as a liberal or something to that effect. Anyway, just witnessing the petulant way in which he behaved, I can only imagine what he does behind the scenes. So let's talk a little bit about where Candace Owens went wrong. There is no doubt in my mind that Candace Owens is an incredibly polarizing person. Those who love her, love her to death. And those who hate her, despise her guts. Happy day after Juneteenth, everybody. I hope everybody had a very relaxing day off. 
Bad news for me. Apparently, I have been banned from the black community again. I've been told that I am not invited to the various cookouts. And the reason why is because I was tweeting and I said something along the lines of Juneteenth is ghetto and it's made up and people were very upset about that. So Candace has made no secret of the fact that she wants America to stop sending resources to Israel to fight Hamas. She's also made no secret of the fact that she regards the actions that are taking place in the Gaza, in the Gaza Strip rather as genocide. But she has also made some serious mistakes along the way and I honestly cannot ignore that and I don't think you should either. Well, for one, she incorrectly stated that Muslims in Jerusalem are only allowed to live in the city's Muslim quarter neighborhood, likening it to the segregated South. So naturally, a lot of Jewish people were really upset about that, as they should be. Secondly, she aligned herself with Kanye West, who has without a doubt said some majorly anti-Semitic things about Jewish people, um, threatening to go DEFCON 3 on them. Let me read one of his quotes that he had here. Let me just read this. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going, he said death con. It's not, it's death con, but I'm going death con on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. So as a result, Kanye West was restricted on Instagram. He was also restricted on X, which was known at the time as Twitter. Here's another one. This is a quote. There are a lot of things that I love about Hitler. The Holocaust is not what happened. Let's look at the facts of that. Jewish people, this is his admonition to, to Jewish people. Jewish people, forgive Hitler today. Let it go. So... <laughs> I think Kanye has gotten in trouble with the black community as well when he said that slavery was a choice. So, I mean, to all my Jewish viewers, please know that, you know, this is what he does. Um, <laughs> and I'm not excusing it, but he's an equal opportunity offender. He also shared an image on social media of a swastika inside of the Star of David. So, I mean, listen, at this point, there's just no denying what it is. It is what it is. And people can excuse the behavior all they want and say, well, he has, he's bipolar or whatever he has, is whatever his mental illness is. But the fact of the matter is, these are anti-Semitic statements and there's no ignoring that. So for Candace to continue supporting this guy and saying that he is her friend and not disavowing the things that he said, can you blame Jewish people for being upset? Can you blame uh, Ben, I almost call him Affleck. Can you blame Ben Shapiro for having an attitude or feeling a certain way? I, I certainly couldn't. If there were some colleague of mine who didn't disavow some KKK member saying something really nasty about black people, I would be like, okay, you're guilty by association. You have, you, you're have, you still calling this person your friend. You haven't distanced yourself from these statements okay, you go over there. As I mentioned earlier, Candace says she's also tired of America funding Israel's war. You know, on a surface level, it's not hard to understand that. I mean, let's think about things for a minute. Uh, we have so many homeless people in the United States. I've talked about this on my channel repeatedly, especially here living in, in, in the DMV area. The homeless situation is like bonkers. If you're out in LA, you know it's like it's crazy levels in Chicago, um, in Seattle, in San Francisco. It's ridiculous. Uh, so we have so many people who are uh, homeless and in need, and it seems like they can't get the, the funding that they need to get back on their feet. We have war veterans, people who have fought for this country, who are holding placards up uh, on, on street corners or in front of the targets or in front of the Walmarts asking for assistance. This is after they defended our country and they can't get assistance. Um, and so when you see it's like that song from Tupac Shakur was like, keep your head up. Like, you know, they got money for wars, but can't feed the poor. It, it, it's very reminiscent of that. So on a surface level, I certainly understand it, but we cannot just engage in surface level thinking because you and I do not want to live with the real world consequences of America not assisting Israel. Here's the first thing you need to consider. It may not look like it right now, but Israel may be showing some restraint due to America's influence. And had America had no influence or no pull in that in that area, in that country, we might see Israel go absolutely bananas on Hamas. I mean, bananas. The flip side of that is, okay, America doesn't give any assistance to Israel, then what are we left with? Israel might not be able to supply its Iron Dome, and we might risk weapons possibly falling into the wrong hands, like 
uh, Russia or China or some other entity, that's a risk we cannot take. For people who are concerned about the financial implications, I get it. The United States right now is facing $34 trillion in debt. I believe I read somewhere that every 100 days or so, that it, the debt goes up by like $1 trillion. That's no small figure. Anyway, so back to Candace Owens. Um, right now, people are speculating about her next move. Everybody's watching with a keen eye to see oh, where she's going to go, who she's going to align herself with. And I think that she and people like Don Lemon really don't need to be aligning themselves with anybody at this point. I think they need to get to the point where they are where they are creating their own platforms, kind of like how uh, Ben Shapiro uh, was able to co-found his own Daily Wire platform. I think they're always going to get in trouble if they align themselves with some other organization, because if they say the wrong thing, that their partner or that their new boss doesn't want to hear, then they're going to end right back up in that same position. She has enough fame. She has enough support. She has enough money, I would imagine, um, to do just that. And I see that she is going a little different route on her platform. She was asking for uh, financial assistance from her viewers, and I think that's a great thing. I think individuals who are are fans of hers, uh, might be more beholden to her than, say, an advertiser who's like, okay, I just don't want anything to do with this girl. Um, but even that comes with challenges, you know? Even that comes with challenges because when you're saying the things that people love or that they support, then they're all with you. And the minute you deviate from the script, that's an issue. Even on this platform, uh, there are people who could watch three, four, five videos of mine and they're like, oh my God, you're the, you're the greatest thing next to sliced bread. And the minute I do a video that they disagree with, they're quick to tell me that they're unsubscribing from the channel. I say, go in peace and serve the Lord. You know, you're free to come and go. Um, but I'm just saying that to say, sometimes even when you're relying on fans, uh, <laughs> they may say, no, I don't want to support you anymore. So I feel like the only way to be truly free is to have your own money you know, have like a bunch of businesses or something like that. And I don't think Candace is at that point just yet. But I think as she is considering the next, I don't know, next year, two or three, she really needs to figure out who she's going to align herself, if anyone at all. And I think Don Lemon needs to definitely be doing the same. Anyway, so that's it for Candace Owens. Let's move on to this interview that Don Lemon did with Elon Musk a few weeks ago. Was the interview boring? Yes. Was it cringy at some points? Yes. Did the interview feel like a blind date where you're sitting opposite someone who has zero personality and you just have nothing in common? And you're just like, if I wasn't waiting for these potato skins and margarita, I would leave. Yes. But let's be real. I heard a lot of mean spirited things about this interview beyond the cringy or the boring or whatever. I heard some, some, some things about this interview that I really didn't uh, agree with. I took a totally different stance and I, I wanted to share that with you all today. I think watching the interview and I watched the whole interview, whereas a lot of people I realize they don't, they don't have time for to sit down and watch a whole interview. So they watch a lot of reaction videos like on my channel, my platform, and I would encourage you to go and watch the whole video. But I think the interview really exposed Elon Musk's hypocrisy. So let's, let's put on our thinking caps here, guys. Let's, and I, I have, I have a cap for you. Okay. I'll just put it right here when you're ready for it. Just let me know. But let's put on our thinking caps here for a second. Let's start off with this clip. Hate speech on the platform is up. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it. Reps for the journalist tell ABC News there were light edits made to the conversation for pauses, but nothing of editorial substance. The two sparring over many topics, including diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives and free speech. So, Don, you love censorship is what you're saying? No, I don't love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in censorship. Is a, it's a, moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or not you know, look, if something's illegal, we're going to take it down. I feel like viewers were so busy just hating on Don Lemon that they weren't really critically thinking about the things that Elon Musk was saying. So you mean to tell me that if someone on the X platform posted a photo of a black man or a black woman or a black child deceased hanging from a tree, that because their posting of that image on X is not illegal, it would stand. Elon stated that X, formerly known as Twitter, doesn't have to take down things unless they are illegal. And then there was a bit of a back and forth between him and Don Lemon about that. And I was like, this makes absolutely no sense. As I was sitting like, I, I literally was like pausing the video like, 
But Twitter has taken down bots before. Bots ain't illegal. Twitter has taken down um, harassment. If you harass someone, they they say, oh, you violate our, um, I don't know what it's called, like your, your, your protocol or your stand, your code of conduct or whatever they call it. But they've removed people from the platform for that before. So it would go without saying to me that if something more serious or more egregious were put on the platform, that even though it's not illegal, you would remove it because it violates your code of conduct or your standards or operating agreements or whatever it is that y'all call it over at X. So I just didn't buy that. And yet people were online treating Elon's responses like they were coming straight from heaven. X has an obligation to remove that image. Wouldn't you say so? Listen, I don't love someone so much that I won't call them out on their crap and I don't hate someone so much that I won't give them props when they deserve it. I felt like a lot of the backlash that Don Lemon got um, was just hive mentality as it typically is and I cannot stand it. It's like listening to people talk about that Don Lemon interview with Elon Musk was like, it was like they all just came together and was like, on three, we hate Don Lemon. One, two, three, we hate Don Lemon. And it's like nobody was taking the time to just critically think about what was being said by Elon Musk. And I hate when people just take something that some a billionaire or somebody who's incredibly popular says and just runs with it without actually sitting back and saying, but this doesn't does this make sense? We agreed to the interview. Throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was tense at times, I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange, but apparently free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. And let's not act like Don Lemon wasn't within his right to ask those questions of Elon Musk. He really was. He's a journalist. That's what you expect him to do. And a lot of the questions that he asked weren't like, these These were questions that were being posed inside the media anyway. People were talking about them on, on, on talk shows all over. I think it was just uncomfortable for him to sit in front of someone and actually um, have to answer questions to be held accountable. I want you to consider this. Interviewing your boss is not an easy thing. And it's clear that Elon Musk is very sensitive and I would probably even venture to say very thin-skinned. He rarely grants interviews, so this was a major coup for Don Lemon to get it, especially after being fired from CNN and people wondering what was going to happen to his career. Elon, like Candace Owens, and like so many other people, is an incredibly polarizing figure, so there was a lot to grill him on. What I will say that I didn't enjoy is that it didn't feel like an interview so much as it felt like an interrogation. I thought that Don did ask some questions that were um, a little off-putting. But you've admitted that you've had, you have a ketamine prescription. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that for? Well, I mean, it's pretty private to ask somebody about a medical prescription, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, I think it's, it's something I'd say, like, uh, th there are times when I have um, sort of, uh, I don't know, a, like, a, like a negative chemical state in my, in my brain. Uh, like depression, I guess. And then uh, ketamine is helpful for uh, getting, getting one outside, out of a negative frame of mind. Do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. If you use too much ketamine, you can't really get work done. For me, when he asked about uh, Elon's meeting with Donald Trump, it wasn't a meeting, he was at an event or a party or somewhere, and Donald Trump came in and he said, yeah, they spoke, and he's asking, like, what did you talk about? That's not my business, that's not his business, and that's not the people's business. They had a private conversation and a private event. So why even ask that question? It felt like he was interrogating him on some sort of court stand. And Elon Musk being, you know, he's a, a multi-billionaire, yes, he's very wealthy, but he's not running for, for office, at least not yet. So why are you grilling him like this? Another problem that Don ran into is that he didn't decide what his end goal was with this interview with Elon Musk. He went into this interview trying to pull a CNN, and he didn't really think this thing through as far as I'm concerned. He made this crucial mistake of thinking that he could go in and interview his potential boss the way he would when he was on CNN and still keep his job. I mean, Elon Musk doesn't strike me as that kind of boss who's like, um, listen, you can ask me whatever you want to ask me, no holes barred. I don't care if it comes across crazy, just ask me the questions. And at the end of the day, I'm still going to cut you a check. I still want you on my platform. There are people like that who exist in the world. I've met certain people like that, but Elon Musk does not strike me as one of those. So I don't know why Don Lemon thought that that would be okay. You know, he had to make a decision, I would imagine, in the beginning, and this is the decision. Do I want to get a juicy check from Elon Musk at the end of the day? Okay, then I'm going to have to do a fluff piece and throw in a 
tough question here or there so it doesn't look so bad. Okay, no, I want to keep my integrity. I am a serious journalist. I was on CNN for over 20 years, so I'm going to do the hard-hitting questions. Okay, you do that, but just know that this man who's very thin-skinned is not going to have you on his platform, not in that capacity. Which one are you going to choose? Like I said, there are people who were just straight hating on Don Lemon, and he's not my favorite person. I don't hate him. I don't know him, but, you know, just from what I watch, he's not my favorite person, but... Um, I don't care that he's not my favorite person. The fact of the matter is I didn't think he deserved all the hate that he got on his platform. And um, I thought he was well within his right to ask the questions. And Elon Musk could have just been like, listen, I don't want to ask. I don't want to answer that question or or found a more. I think he, Elon Musk has been in the game long enough now where he needs to get some media coaching so people could kind of train him on like what to say and how to, to how to handle questions, tough questions that he may not necessarily want to answer. But you know, he just came across very thin-skinned. Let's just say that. So here's my question of the day, kiddies. Uh, for the first part, what do you think should be Don Lemon's and Candace Owens' next move career-wise? What do you think they should be doing next? And secondly, do you think it was Candace's stance on Israel that ultimately got her fired? Are we using that word, fired? Removed from the Daily Wire? What do you think was the ultimate issue there? Drop your comments down below. I look forward to hearing from you all. If you like videos like this one, I would highly recommend that you watch these videos next. That's a wrap. I'll see you next week.